The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Now, as promised, we're at cut 17 with Dr. Keith Abloh. Here's the point about this. Limbaugh theorem. Limbaugh theorem establishes how Obama is not ever attached to his own policies. That Obama is always seen campaigning against what's going wrong. He's always seen trying to fix the jobs problem. He's always seen trying to fix the debt problem when, in fact, he's caused it. But he's not seen as governing. Therefore, he's not held accountable. He's always out of Washington on a campaign trail doing what looks to virgin eyes like a campaign appearance. He's got an audience. He's campaigning against what's wrong in Washington. Everybody goes, yay! Yay! And, and in, in doing so, he's never attached. People do not attach him to the very policies which have caused this literal mess that we have. Well, Dr. Keith Ablo has come along and explained why the Limbaugh theorem works. So let grab some by 16. Let's do these, the first one again before we get to, uh, to 17. He got a question from Steve Ducey this morning on Fox so the average person might hear partisan rhetoric, but what do you hear in the words the president is using? In the words hostage taking, being held for ransom, he said that the Republicans are threatening to blow the whole thing up. There's a real victim mentality here, and it really explains the president's whole mentality and many of his policies that if he feels victimized and believes millions and millions of us have been victimized by America, well, then that explains why he wouldn't negotiate with hostage takers and victimizers who have kidnapped him and threatened to destroy him. And I think that's the way he feels. And I don't doubt that for a minute. I've, I've referred to it as Obama's got a chip on his shoulder about the country, unjustly and immorally founded. Slave country. The rich and the white put this country together for them. And they got rich and stayed rich. And they got white and they stayed white by stealing from everybody, from their own countrymen and from other countries around the world. And this country, and that's why I apologize for, but he is a victim of it. And therefore, it needs to be transformed. It needs to be made more fair. It needs to be made more just. And we need to get rid of the absolute horrors that were present when this country was founded, and that's his mission, and it is. He has said so in so many words. But there's another aspect to being a victim, and that is when you're a victim, all you get is sympathy. You don't get criticism. How can you be criticized? You've been victimized by something. Now, he doesn't, he doesn't say he's a victim, but he portrays himself as one and his uh, uh, other African-Americans, and, and he just acts that way. There's no question about it. Now, Ducey said, are you suggesting the president feels that he's been victimized by the Tea Party? Going back to when his dad abandoned him, when his mother left him with his grandparents, when he describes his grandmother as intimating that she didn't trust men uh, of color, uh, that... All of those things led him to feel victimized. He's grown up to be the leader of the free world, uh, but it's a world in which I think he believes there are people out to get you and people to be helped. So he aspires to the corner office for retribution in a certain way, to balance the scales, to redistribute the wealth, because so many millions of us, he would say, have been hurt, victimized by the system, victimized by the Constitution which is a flawed document, he would say, that's hurt so many of us. The president sees himself as the victim-in-chief. There's no doubt about this. This is a grand slam home run. Now, some of you might be, so what does this matter? Well, it matters to me because the reason it matters to me is because I think all of this is relevant in, in doing what we can to inform people about Obama, particularly now as they're going to be experiencing Obamacare. Look at folks, he got away with not being vetted. I have no, the people this country elected somebody, have no idea who they elected. They, they, they were able to create fantasies about who Obama was. And, and, and many of them don't want to see the truth. Many of them don't want to think they goofed up. 
I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a hard road, but, but this is right on the money, victimized by the system, in this case, capitalism and the very United States of America. People that don't have any money, victims of the rich, victims of the powerful, victims of powerful. And he is there to fix it, not just for you, but for him too. The Constitution victimizes people. The Constitution is a document of negative liberties, he believes. And so that's, he, he, he has sought refuge as a victim and he has, he's achieved it. If you, if you see Obama, if you, if you look at Obama as someone who has a victim mentality, it explains a lot. Because the victim mentality relies on believing that you have been harmed. And that you're not responsible for the injuries that occurred. When you're a victim, you're not responsible for what happened to you. This is, in fact, what's behind this latest media of uh, insanity on the name of the Washington Redskins. It's it's supposed it's victimizing people. It, it, it's it's victimizing. It's characterizing. It's 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 impugning. It's insulting, and they're being victimized. And they're not doing anything. They're, they're being injured. We've got to stop this. We've got to stop hurting people in this country. We've got to start feeling sorry for people. Also, when you're a victim. You couldn't have stopped what happened to you. A victim is entirely powerless. A victim is a mere pawn in a game of life. A victim is Mongo in Blazing Saddles. And about the only fun you get to have is beating up a horse now and then. And if if you're a victim, Peter will leave you alone when you do it. But your suffering because of your victimization makes you morally superior and deserving of sympathy. And then you are immune from criticism. So if you set yourself up as a victim of the system and you're representing other victims and the system is the country and therefore the whole system, the country needs to be changed and transformed. Um, victims, by the way, there's another aspect. Victims are not expected to lead. Victims expect to be rescued. And I think we could say that Obama is constantly rescued by the media, who also believes that he is a victim. Could we not say that the media considers every African American in this country a victim, except those who don't feel like victims? So Clarence Thomas, for example, or Thomas Sowell, or... Shall be steel. These men and women like them, they don't feel victimized by America. They're proud Americans. So they're worthy of scorn. And they, they don't, they, they but, but aside from those relative few, every other African American is a victim of an unjust, unfair system. This is why there's a never-ending push for affirmative action. The quotas and making sure that certain minorities get certain jobs. Doesn't matter. The percentage is way larger than the actual population percentage. It's never satisfied because this victimization happened from the get-go and it can never be fully redressed. And that's a political calculation. And I think... This synopsizes our problem in the country right now, is that we are totally absorbed, whether we know it or not, with victims, people who have been victimized, used, taken advantage of, stolen from, what have you, because of the evils. And that's why political correctness works, by the way. The reason the arbiters of PC are able to get away with it is because Part and parcel of all this is a lot of guilt. People have been made to feel guilty because of all these victims. The real interesting aspect of all this is that Obama himself positions himself as one. I think Dr. 
Ablo here is exactly right. Okay, brief timeout. We'll come back. I during the break, I I found some things about Obama and, and his years as a teacher, a professor at the University of Chicago Law School. And it turns out that Obama actually taught victimhood at the University of Chicago. You know, he's a constitutional law professor, scholar, or some such thing. And I've got a New York Times story here from July 30th, 2008, and the title of the story is Teaching Law, Testing Ideas, Obama Stood Slightly Apart. And from the article, Obama's voting rights class traced the election or the evolution of election law from the disenfranchisement of blacks to contemporary debates over districting and campaign finance. His most original course, an historical political seminar, as much as a legal one, was on racism and law. Mr. Obama was especially eager for his students to understand the horrors of the past, his students say. He assigned a 1919 catalog of lynching victims, including some who were first raped or stripped of their ears and fingers, others who were pregnant or lynched with their children, and some whose bodies were sold off, bone fragment by bone fragment, to gawkers. He was a visiting lecturer, I'm sorry, he's a visiting lecturer at Chicago, and, and those are the kinds of courses he taught. Now, nobody denies that there were things in this country's past that are not honorable, good, whatever. But it's a far different thing to believe that's what the country is today. Our Constitution enabled all of those uh, inequalities, if you will, to eventually be overcome. And we even fought a civil war largely over all of this. And those things don't happen in this country anymore. This country addressed its moral failings. And this country overcame them. And it did so within the framework of its constitution. But Obama doesn't see beyond the past. And he and so he's he he's he's teaching this victimhood to his charges in class. And when it comes to teaching election law and history in America, what does he focus on? The absolute most reprehensible parts. And then he says, this is what this country is for you because of your skin color. And ergo, he implants hatred and victimization in all of his students. And, of course, what was Obama's other job? A community organizer. And what is that but telling everybody that they're victims? So I think Dr. Keith Ablo is on to something. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. 